Hello and welcome to this video on the Visual Basic Editor. Now most people don't really have time to stop and figure out how exactly the Visual Basic Editor works. Now in this video I'm going to go through it and going to show you all the different tips and tricks that you can use and will help you write your code much more efficiently. So let's get started with the very first thing which is the most important and this is how to get to the Visual Basic Editor. Now in different versions of Excel we get to it in different ways by clicking say on the developer tab and then we click on the visual basic icon but what you can actually do is use the alt f11 shortcut so alt f11 brings you into the visual basic editor in any version of excel all the way back to 2003 and also if you press it again it brings you back out so it brings you back to excel so Alt F11 is very useful. Now it doesn't only work in Excel, it also works in Word, PowerPoint, Access, it even works in Microsoft Visio. So Alt F11, very useful. So once you're in the Visual Basic Editor, what you will see is three important windows. So the, the window on the top left is your project window. The window below that is the properties window and then the window to the right which is which is gray at the moment and, and is empty is where the code appears anytime we open the visual basic editor what we see in the project window is all the workbooks that are currently open in excel and in these workbooks we see all the kind of related objects so the objects will typically be the sheets we always have it this workbook and then we'll have any modules that we have such as class modules standard modules etc so in each one we have sheet one then we have sheet two and these are basically where we can put code if we want to write code on the sheets to open any item what we basically have to do is double click it so we've got it highlighted here but it's not actually appearing so if we double click you can see that it appears and you'll see at the top in the bar at the very top of the screen you'll see that it says whatever the current object is so you can see here that it's sheet one now if we double click on sheet two you can see that it now says sheet two at the top so just to keep in mind if you want to change through the different items now we'll have a look at why we would use sheets just a bit later but let's have a look at the properties window below so the properties window here is whatever we've got selected it shows the properties so we select sheet one you can see that it has the different properties of sheet one so for example it has the name and if we change the name here it will change the name on the worksheet and it will change the name in parentheses now the name on the left is what we call the code name and if you want to know more about this just check out my video on the code name of the worksheet so essentially whatever selected in the project window we'll see the properties below so when we're writing code in Excel VBA, we write our code in what's called modules. So to create a module, we right click, we select insert, and then we select module. You can see that this created a new module. And you can see if you look at the very top, it says module one, because it's opened the one we've just created. And if you look in the properties window below, you can see that module has just got one property and that's the name. So we can change the name here if we want, we could say, mod and let's say uh, report for example now let's create a second module so again right click insert and module and what we're going to do is we're going to put some subs here so we put a sub in here and a sub is where our code goes so let's say create report and let's have a second one called read the data so what you can understand about modules here is that v your VBA applications are made up of modules. So a workbook has a group of modules and really all the modules do is hold our subs. So each sub is like a unique function that does something in VBA. Now we can use subs on their own or what we do if we're writing good code is that we get one sub to call another sub. So each sub has its own small job. So to switch between them, as, as you saw before, I just double click on them and this opens it. But what I want to do is show you a shortcut key. So let's just say this is, we'll just say it's mod one so that we know which one we're talking about. 
If we want to switch between our different modules, we can use Control F6. So Control F6, and that cycles between all the ones are open. So this one is Sheet 2, Sheet 1, back to Module 1, Module, Mod Report, Sheet 2, and so on. If you want to close one of these, you can click on the X in the very top right. You mightn't have noticed it before, and this will close whatever window's open. Now, a shortcut key you can also use is Control F4. So Control F4 controls the current document in Microsoft Office application. So Control F4 is the same here. It just controls whatever document is open or whatever module. So Control F4 closes this, closes this, closes this, and they're all closed. And again, to open it, we just double click. So it's very important to understand this so that we can easily move around our code. So when you've got lots of code, trying to switch between all the modules and trying to find where exactly the code is can be a bit tricky. So what we can do just to hold the place in code we're looking at is we can use what's called bookmarks. So we click in a sub and we just click toggle bookmark and that turns it on. If we want to turn it off, we just click toggle again and it turns it off. Now, once we have the bookmark in place, if we go anywhere, we can just go up here and we can say next bookmark and it'll bring us to that bookmark. Now, if we set another bookmark here and then we want to go between them, we can just do next, next and it keeps cycling between them. Now, we can have as many bookmarks as we like and another thing to keep in mind is once we close Excel, the bookmarks are all gone. So it doesn't, they don't stay in projects. So now the bookmarks, as I showed here, are on this toolbar. And this toolbar is what we call the edit toolbar. So it's basically the stuff that's in the edit menu. So you can see at the bottom bookmarks, but it's much easier, of course, to use it from the toolbar. So now the toolbar that we've been looking at it, let's have a look at them just a bit closer. So if we want to see the toolbar or we want to get rid of toolbars, what we can do is go to our view menu and it shows us the toolbars. So you can see the ones that are ticked on. So if we tick off edit, you can see that it's gone. Now let's do that again under view and we tick it off here and now debug is gone. But a much easier way to do it is if we right click on the bar itself like this and we can just easily select the toolbars that we want. So another useful thing we can do with the toolbars is we can actually drag them out. So it's very useful if you're going through your code or if you're debugging. And we want to put them back, we simply just double click. Now, if you want to move them around, you can just go over the kind of four dots and then you can just drag them anywhere that you want to put them. So we could put them up here, for example. So again, very easy and right click here and just select the ones that you want. Now I have a couple of extra ones here. They're kind of an add-in that I use. So you don't need to worry about them so much. So that's the toolbars and they can be very, very useful, especially as I said, when we're debugging the code. So now another very useful thing or something we really should understand is the windows. So you can see here, we have the windows like project window, properties window, and so on. Well, we can undock these as well by double clicking. So double click it on docks and we can drag it around like this. And then we want to put it back We double click and it puts it in the last place it was docked. Now we can also move these around and dock them like at the bottom, for example, and then like undock them and it will dock it in the last place where it was. We typically keep these over to the side. Now, the thing to keep in mind is some people say to me that their visual basic editor might look a bit different than mine because often I close these windows. So it's just important to realize it's just the different windows in different places. Now, another thing that can happen is the windows get closed like this, we click X, so if they're closed, every window that you're looking for is under view. So you can see view project explorer or control R and you can see view properties window F4 and they come back again. Now, some of the other windows we have like the watch window. We can do view watch window. We can do view immediate window and we can do view locals window. And with all of these, again, we can just undock them or dock them as we like. And again, if they don't appear, what we can do is just go to the view menu. Now there is a shortcut key for the immediate window, which is control G. 
There isn't one for the watch window, but what we can do is Alt V and H for the watch window. So we can just do Alt V H and you can see that's a shortcut key for the watch window. Now for the watch window, we can also add values. We can do something like this. We can do, uh, let's say I, and then we can do Shift F9 and just add, and it opens the watch window with that variable. So these are things to keep in mind because people often get confused by where the windows are or they've lost the window, they can't open it and so on. So it's quite easy to do. Everything is under the view menu. So the Shift F9 thing that we looked at, you can find it under the debug menu. So debug is all about stepping through the code, stopping examining the code and looking at the different variables. And this is really for a video itself. It's quite a big topic. But one thing to really keep in mind here is the compile VBA project at the top. This is very useful indeed. So we run this when we're about to run our project. And what it does is it finds any errors that are in our project. So it finds not only syntax errors, but it also finds kind of project wide errors where we might have a for loop like this. And if we do a debug compile on it, it will tell us that the for without a next, so that there's no next statement for this. So this is very useful when you run your code to use the debug compile beforehand. Now the next menu run is very important as well because obviously you want to run your code. So run here is broken down into run sub user form. We can use the shortcut key F5 for this. And then to break the code at any stage is control break. So back in the old days, this was very straightforward because every keyboard was the same. It had a control break. But nowadays with every laptop is different. You have to figure out what the control break is on your own laptop. If we want to run something, say, say we want to run a create report, we do message box and let's say hello. And the key here is that if the cursor's inside and we press F5, let's just do it from the menu, then it just selects the sub that we were in. If the cursor's outside and we do it, you can see that it asks us to pick which macro we want to run. Now you can see we also have the run menu here and you can see that pressing run on this is the very same as pressing run from the menu. But of course, just using F5 is the easiest thing to use. Now this covers all the really key points of the Visual Basic Editor. Now there's other small things that you can figure out for yourself, but I think it's very important to understand the toolbars, what the windows are, and how to run your code easily and all these other items that we covered today. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did or you have any questions and queries, then please add them to the comments below. If you could please click on the like button if you enjoyed the video. And if you want to hear more about my upcoming videos, then click on the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it to get notified. Now before you go, don't forget that I give away a free cheat sheet for Excel VBA and you can get it from the description of this video. Just click on the link.